Maps have been a core part of iPhone ever since the very first device shipped way back in 2007. And the underlying framework has been available to developers almost as long. Even better, Apple wraps up that framework for use with SwiftUI, meaning we can use maps and annotations right alongside text, images and more as part of our SwiftUI view hierarchy. Let's start with something nice and simple. Placing a map onto the screen means having some program state to store the map's center location, plus also its zoom level to dictate what's currently visible on the screen. This is all stored inside a new type called an MK coordinate region. And the MK part comes from the name map kit, which is where the whole framework powering maps lives. And so our first step is going to be to import map kit into content view. So we can use all that maps functionality. And now we can make a property in here to store the maps state. We can say uh, at state private var map region is an MK coordinate region. And this consists of two values, each which have their own types. The center is a CL location coordinate 2D, so a latitude and longitude. So I'll say CL location coordinate 2D, latitude I'm gonna do 51.5, and longitude, I'll do minus 0.12. And the span is the zoom level, the degrees of how many degrees should be visible uh, left and right and above and below as well. So we'll say uh, there's an MK coordinate span. Again, latitude delta and longitude delta will be 0.2 and 0.2. So 0.2 degrees uh, latitude, 0.2 degrees uh, longitude. And that'll center on the city of London. Now, all these values are measured in degrees. But in practice, what it equates to like at actual meters or kilometers really uh, varies because of the way, you know, the Earth's round and so forth. And so as you move away from the equator, you're going to find uh, that longitude uh, shrinks and shrinks and shrinks down to effectively zero when you hit the North Pole um, and up to a maximum value. I think it's like 66 kilometers or so at the equator. But it'll take some uh, experimentation is what I'm saying to find the exact zoom level and starting point for your preferred location. Just, just noodle around so you come up with. Anyway, with that in place, we can now make our map. We can say there's a map here with a coordinate region of dollar map region like that. And it has a two-way binding so it can update as the user moves around the map. Panning around or pinching to zoom and so forth, it'll rewrite the map region. If I press command R now to build and run our code, all being well, we can see it running in action. Um, the preview isn't very helpful, by the way. Um, you won't see very much, but the live version you can see, there we go, the City of London. Now, there are a variety of extra options we can pass in here when making maps, but by far the most important and most useful is the ability to add annotations to the map, which are markers that represent various locations of our choosing. We wanna pick out to the user somehow. Um, to do this, takes at least three steps depending on your goal. Uh, first, you want to define a new data type that will contain your location. Uh, second, make an array of those with all your annotations you want to show. And then third, pass that into your map view, telling it as well how to convert one location into some kind of annotation view you can render on the screen. Uh, for example, we might say, that our underlying data is a struct called location, which is identifiable. And it needs to be identifiable here because you'll dynamically make map markers. There could be many of them. And so uh, you've got to, be able to loop over these and know which is which, and that's where identifiable comes in useful. Anyway, we'll say that ID is a UUID, so everyone's unique. It'll be a name string, but also a coordinate, which will be another CL location coordinate 2D. And now we can go ahead and define an array of locations wherever we want to add map annotations to our uh, peer. So we'll say, uh, let locations be an array of a location here. And I'll use the name of Buckingham Palace. And that has a CL location coordinate 2D with latitude of 51.501 and longitude of minus 0.141. There we go, that's Buckingham Palace. And I'll do another one, location, we'll do the name, Tower of London, off to the east. 
and that has a CL location coordinate 2D with latitude of 51.508 uh, and longitude of minus 0 0.076. Obviously you'd add more here, but that's enough for now. Uh, step three is the important part because we want to feed this array of locations into our map view and then provide a function that converts one location into some kind of visible annotation on the map. Now, SwiftUI provides us with a couple of different ways of rendering those annotations. Um, but the simplest one is called a map marker, which is a little balloon with a latitude longitude coordinate attached. That's all it is, really. And so we can say, uh, have that coordinate region, that's fine. But then use annotation items, our locations array. And for the function that converts one location to annotation, we'll say, give me the location and then put that immediately into a map marker with location.coordinate. Uh, location in, there we go. And we're just saying, just draw a map marker, little balloons at those two locations. And now if I press Command R again, we should see our little dots, there we go. So this one on the left here, next to St. James's, down here, uh, this is, the uh, Buckingham Palace right here. And over here to the east along the Thames is, boom, the Tower of London. So we're now pointing at particular places in our thing here, which is really, really nice. Um, they don't show any useful information. I mean, yeah, you can see <laughs> um, Bloody Tower and Traitor's Gate, and uh, these are real, by the way. <laughs> they really are there. Um, but the pin itself, I can press in it and nothing actually appears. You know, I, I'm actually pressing right now, and there's no information there because we just gave this thing a coordinate. There's no information there at all. Um, to add the extra information, to actually show us the title, you know, Buckingham Palace and Tower of London, whatever, um, we've got to make a different kind of annotation marker here because um, this one isn't going to cut it. Instead, we've got to use a different type called a map annotation, helpfully enough, nice and easy. This accepts the same coordinate that map marker does, but rather than just showing a system style balloon every time, we get to pass in whatever custom Swift UI view we want. Anything you like at all. And so we could say, um, I want to have little uh, red circles around particular hotspots. I could say as a map annotation with a coordinate of our location.coordinate. And then inside there, this is where I do our Swift UI view. I could say there'll be a, a circle that is stroked in red with line width of three and then a frame width of 44, height of 44. So a totally custom Swift UI view. So I'll just go ahead and press Command R. And now we should all being well, no longer see the balloons, but see circles like that instead, which is great. And you know, once you're using map annotation, you can pass in any Swift UI views you want. It's really a, a great customization point. Um, you could add titles here as well, for example, you know, with a, a V stack and more. It's really down to you. So you could have said uh, there's a V stack with our circle, and then below that, a text of our location name, for example. And that's also going to work really, really well. It might be a bit hard to read against the map, though. Uh, let's find out how, see how it looks. There we go. So, yeah, it's a little bit hard to read, but you get the idea. Um, and of course, you can make it interactive. We could have said, you know, rather than adding that, that information there, um, instead I want the circle to do something when it's tapped. I could have said you have an on tap gesture and we'll just print out uh, tapped on location dot name when it's uh, tapped on the circle also works. I mean, it's really, really flexible here. Uh, so I'll tap on this thing now and you'll see um, tap the Buckingham Palace appears various times and I'll tap on this a few times and there we go. So you can see it prints out. Uh, both of them work great. You could even, if you wanted to, uh, put your whole Swifty Y view of your annotation inside a navigation link, therefore directing the user somewhere else when they tap on a particular place in your map. So we could have said, for example, our map here is inside a navigation view. Let's go ahead and push it all in there one level. Perhaps give this thing a custom title like a London Explorer, for example. And now, rather than having an on tap gesture, we'll instead say there's a navigation link here. 
And that's going to point to the text of location.name as a simple little placeholder. And then uh, the label for that will be our circle again. So when they tap on this thing, show the location name as its own text view on the screen, sliding it in and make the label for that our circle. Let's give that a try and see how that looks. There we go. Uh, so I'll tap on this one over here. There we go, Tower of London, and then press the one over here. Boom, Buckingham Palace. The point is that you get to decide whether you want something simple, like I just want a load of balloons, that's fine. Brilliant. Or add your own custom layouts with map annotation, and then go above and beyond. Add all the interactivity you want as well, using tap gestures, navigation links, and more, all the SwiftUI tools and techniques you already know can be put to use right here.